I want to show you a small project I'm currently working on. It's a native ESP H266 smart meter, which is measuring my oil consumption or the oil consumption of my heater. So this is the web page where I can visualize this information. So I do have this line where I see my oil consumption per day and the outside temperature per day. By default, um, I do get um, a graph for the current day and by clicking another day, I do get the details for that day. So how do I get this information? Um, at the detail graph, you can see that uh, we do have consumptions um, at different times. So what I do is that I measure how long the heater is active and from that information I can approximate how much oil I actually consumed. So, but how, how do I get this information? First of all, there is a small script which is inserting um, the data uh, about the location and uh, therefore the temperature as I get the uh, current outside temperature from openweathermap.org and the duration. Okay, and let's try that. Let's call that link. Okay, we do have a success here. And this information is inserted into um, a MySQL database. And if we refresh that page, we see, okay, there it is. That's the time. And that's the consumption. So basically how this works is that I measure um, or the, the uh, ESP8266 is measuring how long the heater was active and then is calling that small script here and the information at the end you know, can be visualized here. So first of all I want to show you my setup. We do have the uh, ESP breakout here and we do have a small USB UART bridge here and uh, a PSOC4 Pioneer kit which I use as um, a power supply. So there's nothing going on on that chip, it's, it's just a power supply. Okay, so first let's see if we are connected. Yep, we are connected and then I edit um, a small AT command which is listing all the available AT commands on, uh, on on the firmware. So this firmware is based on the official uh, SDK and it's extending the AT example. You can download all the sources and the binaries for that project, also the files for the for the web server from GitHub, and uh, you you find the link to that. Um, uh, GitHub repository uh, in the comment section of that video. Okay, so you see that there is a CI start lock AT command which I edit. Okay, and I called it previously so I don't need to type it right now. And how does it work? So first of all I specify the protocol uh, which I want to use. It's TCP. Um, and then I specify the URL. Okay, so that's the URL to uh, the script which is inserting the data. And then I say, okay, this is going to happen on port 80, which is the default port for uh, HTTP. Okay, uh, so this is the command for a CIP max zero, so no multiple connections. If we do have a CIP max of one, we also can add the connection ID here. So let's start it. Okay, it's telling me it's done setting up the locker a locker at GPI02. GPI02, uh, I configured it to be um, a pull up pin. So um, if the, the heater is uh, is active, um, it will activate a relay which is pulling GPI02 to ground. And once it is released again, the the time how long it had been pulled down is sent to the script. So let's try that. Okay, 
we do have, I think it's the blue one. We have the blue one here and we connect it to current just for a few seconds and then release it. And we can see, okay, so it's linked, it's sending the, um, the, the header and we get a response. Okay, we do have a success here. And if we go to the page, then we do see, okay, very small. There was something, five seconds. At, okay, oh my god, it's already very late. Um, five seconds, yep. There we are. Yeah, and that's how, it, how it's working. Um, I mean, this is just one example of, uh, of how this can be used. Um, this is now an event-based approach, so every time there is a burning, uh, I, I do send the data. But you might want to extend the firmware, or maybe at some point I will extend the firmware. Uh, you maybe want to, to measure cyclic, let's say, uh, once an hour or something. And yeah, this, but this can can easily be modified. You can use the the the, um, the sources on GitHub as a I think quite good starting point to get your own project started. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that video a little and keep on coding. Bye.